In this video, we're going to be looking at solving an electrochemistry problem. Um, I invite you to pause the video and try out the question yourself, and then and then just go ahead and, and then boot up again when you need to figure out how to do it. But this is based off of the 2001 exam. It's a lot of stuff in it. I think current exams don't have them all just they don't have all electrochemistry for one giant problem anymore, but there are parts of it in the AP exam. And so this question has a lot of different things in it that you can involve, um, that are involved in solving electrochem problems. So this is a nickel zinc system. I have nickel electrode in here, and you can see that it is in a nickel nitrate solution and zinc is in a zinc nitrate solution. They're both at one molar and which is standard conditions. And, and we have a salt bridge and we have a wire. And it doesn't give me a whole lot of information. Sometimes they tell me if the mass is increasing or decreasing. And as in our prefix example, we saw that you can, if the mass is increasing, we can check to see if it's going into a solid or if the mass is decreasing, we can see if it's going in solution. But here, they don't have that. Instead, they have a list of reduction potentials for half reactions. And they have a couple of them that are um, just there to throw you off. And so one of the first things you gotta do is to figure out which ones, what reactions are happening. So I have nickel, and I have nickel nitrate. Well, what is the charge of the nickel ion here? Same thing with zinc and zinc nitrate. What's the charge of the zinc ion here? So figure that out and write the half reactions. And I, you can pause it now. And if you figure out what the half reactions are, well, um, I know I have zinc two plus involved and I have nickel two plus involved. Um, and we don't know what direction the half reactions are going yet, but that's what we use the table for. So I look at the table and I see that this one has zinc, sorry, nickel two plus and nickel solid. This one has nickel oxide and nickel two plus and, and I don't see nickel oxide anywhere in this system. So that tells me that this reaction I'm not gonna use. So we can get rid of this one. Zinc two plus, and zinc, well, it looks like that one, similar to what this is up here. This has zinc hydroxide and zinc, and I don't see any zinc hydroxide anywhere in my system. So this one I'm gonna cross off and get rid of. Okay, so a lot of the times they give you ones that are not necessary. And, and now if I have these two reactions, I need to figure out which one is going the reduction and which one is gonna be flipped to undergo oxidation. Well, for any system to work, if this is gonna be thermodynamically favorable, I need the overall E naught to be positive. So E naught cell overall must be positive. If I wanted to have the reaction happen. So if I keep this one, let's try this out. If I keep this one the way it is, and I take this one and I flip it, Remember, if I flip a reaction, the E cell changes to the, the opposite of it. Well, that would become positive 0.76. This is negative 0.25. If I take these two numbers and add them up, is that positive? It does. So that means that this one has to stay and this one's gonna flip, okay? So when you're doing that, you just always check to see, um, and if you did it the other way around, that would not happen. So we take this and this is gonna be um, the reversed and I just answered the first question for you. So I apologize if you're trying to wait for a moment to pause. Um, this is gonna be the reduction, then this is gonna be the oxidation. Anode and cathode. Hopefully you can do that. Remember, anox, anode, oxidation happens. And then the red cat reduction cathode happens. So we have ox, red cat, and 
This is my oxidation, so that's my anode. And this would be my cathode. Okay, so my net ionic equation. So go ahead and do that. Take these two equations, do what you need to do, and figure out what the overall E cell is. You can pause now and try that. If I take my first, I'm gonna go ahead and take a different sheet of paper, and if I take my nickel and two electrons, and then my other one is gonna be reversed, so zinc is gonna go to Zn, two plus, plus two electrons. This goes to negative 0 0.25. This is positive 0 0.76, okay? The way I do this is I just take this, I flip it the way it is, and I just add them up as they are. Remember, if you ever have to multiply anything by a coefficient. So if I take, if I had one electron here and two electrons here, and I had to multiply this by two, remember the cell potential does not get multiplied. So if I multiply this by any coefficients, E naught for the cell does not get multiplied because the potential stays the same. Doesn't matter how much of this is you have, okay? So I'm gonna take this, go ahead and add this up, negative 0.25 plus 0.76, that equals 0 0.51 volts. So that is my overall cell potential. Determine if the reaction is spontaneous or not. So that's my next question. Go ahead and how do we do that? Um, nowadays they use favorable. So spontaneous, favorable, they are synonymous. And, well, to do this, we need delta G. So delta G, remember, on my equation sheet, tells me it's N, negative N, F, E. Do I actually have to calculate delta G? And the answer is no. Because if I know that N is always positive, doesn't, this is my number of electrons, F is always positive, E naught is going to be my cell voltage here, and that's gonna be in this here. Well, this is positive, and if delta G is negative, if I plug all these numbers in, delta G is negative, that means it is favorable. So negative means favorable. I just have to justify it by saying E naught is positive, plug it into delta G, which re results in a negative number, and so that is gonna be how that works. E, if current flows, which electrode gains mass, and how do you know? Well, um, let's, let's kind of do this first. So, what direction are my electrons moving? Well, my nickel here is gaining electrons, and so my zinc has to lose electrons, and so it's gonna move in this direction. Okay, so electrons are gonna move in this direction. And as they gain electrons over here, what's happening to my nickel? Well, I'm going from nickel solution, Ni2+, plus, and that's gonna get deposited onto this electron, electrode here and form a solid. So which one gains mass? Well, the nickel one is gonna gain some mass because that's gonna start depositing on there. Okay. What directions do things flow in the salt bridge? So the salt bridge is kind of a weird thing because it's this thing in the middle that has potassium nitrate or some kind of in non-reactive ions. So this is always, almost always an alkali metal. This is almost always nitrate. And they're there so that they don't react to anything. Well, what's the purpose of the salt bridge? It wants to keep things neutral, okay? So if I have electrons going in this direction, so think about this, answer yourself, but um, if you're struggling with this, the way I think about it is if I have electrons that are going into this side here, okay, so this side is becoming, electrons are going here, and my nickel plus is going away. So I'm losing positive charges and getting more negative over here. 
Same thing on this side. I have zinc, and that is changing into zinc two positive. So I'm making more and more positive charges over here. So this becomes more positive, and this side is becoming more negative. Well, in order to keep these neutral, I need these ions to start shifting and, and balancing that out. So we know that nitrate, NO3 negative, that's a negative charge, and K is a positive charge. And if I want them to balance out, well, I need more negatives to go to, to, go to this side here. And I need more positives to go to this side here to keep things electrically neutral. So that is the direction that the ions flow in the salt bridge. Okay, uh, question G. Indicate how the value of E cell will be affected by the concentration of nickel uh, if it was changed from one molar to 0.1 molar and the concentration of zinc if it remained at one molar. Okay, so this is now a non-standard non -standard conditions. And if I have... Um, if I have my overall net ionic equation, I didn't write that out. I should write that out. So my net ionic equation is Ni2 plus plus zinc goes to nickel plus Zn2 plus. So remember, non-standard cell, I have the Nernst equation, which tells me that E cell equal to E cell not minus RT over NF ln Q. Okay, so this, this is on the equation sheet now, and it's a lot of stuff. I don't need to calculate everything. To calculate stuff for the Nernst equation, all you really need is Q. Okay, you can justify everything else. You don't have to calculate any of this stuff. You just need to figure out what Q is, and then how that's gonna affect your E cell. So if my nickel Ni concentration is now 0.1 molar, okay, so this thing here is now 0 0.10 molar, and if this concentration stays the same at 1.0 molar, let's take a look and see what Q is. So Q is the reaction quotient, that is products over reactants, so Zn2 plus concentration over nickel 2 plus concentration. So if I do that, that's going to be 1 molar divided by 0 0.1 molar. And that will be 10, okay? So that's going to be 10. Q is 10. Well, what does that do to this factor right here? So ln of Q, even if you don't have a calculator with you, if your calculator broke somehow, I, hopefully that doesn't happen on the AP test. Um, but if you, if you calculate it, ln of Q is 2.3. But if ln is greater than 1, that means ln of Q is going to be bigger than 0. So ln of Q ends up being 2.30, okay? Um, remember, ln of 1 is 0, and anything bigger than that is going to be bigger than zero. So LNQ is zero. Well, that means this whole thing here is positive. Okay, so R is always positive, T is always positive, N is always positive, F is always positive. So this thing is positive. If E cell is some number, 0 0.51, 0 0.51, minus a positive number, what is my new E cell going to be? Well, it's going to be less than the original E cell, okay? So if I want to justify this answer here, it says, how will it affect the E cell? Well, the new E cell is going to be less than the standard cell potential because you say, well, ln of Q, Q is 10. So I would show how to calculate Q. And if you said 11, ln of Q is greater than 1, that means this whole thing here is going to be less than the original value. Okay? So that's how you solve for that.
And then the last question is state whether k, the equilibrium constant, is less than 1, greater than 1, or equal to 1. Well, um, for this one, you need delta g equals negative rt ln of k. Okay, that's also on your equation sheet. And from before, I know delta g is negative. This thing here is negative, right? So that's negative. Well, I have a negative here. R is always positive. T is always positive. That means ln of k must be positive. If ln of k is positive, well, that means k has to be greater than 1. Okay? Because remember, if ln of ln of 0, sorry, ln of 1 equals 0. So if anything is bigger than 1, like k is bigger than 1, that means the ln of k is going to be greater than 0. All right. That's how you solve an electrochemistry question.